raise a monster. They are a team that sure. wants to hit you in the mouth. Josh Norman, get you some. Okay. Oh my! And they have an identity, right? They're gonna punch you in the face. The monster! On this edition of Titans All Access, we've got the quarterback. That's right, number 17 himself, Ryan Tannehill, is this week's Nissan Insider. Find out why he loves game-ending drive, why he'll throw the ball to anyone who's open, and why playing for offensive coordinator Arthur Smith is so much fun. Plus, Dave McGinnis breaks down the explosiveness of A.J. Brown. And with the Bengals awaiting, general manager John Robinson has a full scouting report. Here we go. Titans All Access starts now. The monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. We welcome you to Titans All Access with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you as part of what will be a special program because today on this show, two parts, not one part, but two parts with quarterback Ryan Tannehill and our Nissan Insider. How about that? Well, Mike, we need to have a conversation about this because I came in at the time I was told to be here to shoot the show, and all of a sudden there's this interview with the quarterback that I knew nothing about. Well, you knew something about it. I didn't know that it was happening. Well, he wanted to go early. So I got to talk to Ryan Tannehill, and we started off talking about a compliment from the Titans general manager in regards to approach. Sabotage. Sorry. You're not sorry. Carry the burden, carry the load. I'm on the right track, on the road. Stand to attention. Thanks so much for taking time with us, 17. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I want to start with something John Robinson said about you recently. I asked him, I said, why is Ryan Tannehill the perfect guy to be the Tennessee Titans quarterback right now? And the word he used to start with, he praised a lot of your attributes, but the number one thing he said was your approach. Explain to us from a quarterback's perspective what approach is and why that's so important. I'm assuming it's just the way I approach the game. You know, my preparation day in and day out, how I come into work every single day. You know, I come to, uh, to try to get better each and every day, no matter what the situation is going on around me. I do everything I can to, to take advantage of the opportunities that are given to me. Whether it's Wednesday, it's first, second down, Thursday, third down stuff, Friday, red zone, total game plan, and I'm trying to hold the guys around me accountable and, and ultimately go out on, on every Sunday and find a way to win. Ryan, we've seen you so many times as the Titans quarterback go out for a final drive and lead the team down the field. Using the word approach again, what's your mindset when you take the field as the Titans quarterback to begin a last-minute drive? Mindset is to, to go execute one play at a time and, and finish in the end zone and win the game. I have a lot of confidence in the guys around me. You know, we've shown time and time again that we can get it done. But really just stay, staying calm in the storm, right? It's a lot of craziness going on. Time's run down, a lot of, a lot of chaos that catch you up. But I really just try to center myself and, and focus on, on one play at a time, executing each play in itself, keeping in mind situation and, and everything like that. And then ultimately, you know, making the plays to get yourself and the team in the end zone. Is that as much fun as it looks like it is? Oh, it's so much fun. I mean, there's really nothing better than, you know, winning a game in the fourth quarter or overtime. It's, those are the moments you dream about when you're a kid or, or even now when you lay in bed at night. You picture yourself marching down the field and, and winning the game uh, late late in the fourth quarter or overtime, man. Nothing better than that. Ryan Tannehill will throw the ball to any eligible receiver. Some quarterbacks don't do that. You know, they pick two or three guys, and that's where the ball's going. You will throw to anybody on the roster who is out there eligible and open. Why? I believe in the guys around me. You know, we have a lot of guys who come to work each and every day and, and prove themselves. You know, you may not see it on Sundays, but there's a lot of guys that are maybe on practice squad or, or receivers who don't get a whole lot of playing time, but a lot of confidence in those guys. I see the way that they work and the way that they make plays in practice. So. When their number is called and they have to step in to, and go into a game for us, 
that, that confidence doesn't drop. And I have, a, I have a lot of confidence that I can just do my job, which is you know, going through the play, finding the open guy, and then delivering an active football. Ryan Tannehill will rejoin Titans All Access later in the show for a second part of his Nissan Insider. But up next, it's Coach Dave McGinnis, ready to go beneath the surface to break down some big plays from A.J. Brown. Every vote counts. I know a lot of times for me, I, I think my vote's not going to count. But if the person next to me says the same thing, the next person to him says the same thing, all of a sudden nobody's voting. I didn't really feel the importance as a younger adult, but now I really see the importance, especially in this election, because every single vote counts. I mean, you never know if your vote could be the swing vote that can decide you know, who could be the president. It's your right as an American to, to make sure that your voice is heard and you have a say that what not only goes on the presidential elections, but you know everything between that and city council. Every vote counts. 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 Tighten up. Wide receiver A.J. Brown has four touchdowns since returning from injury, which is pretty impressive. So we had to talk about it. And who better to break this down than Coach Mack? So check this out on this week's Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. This is Coach Mack. Welcome to Beneath the Surface, powered by Microsoft Surface. Today, we're going to look at four plays in the second half of the Titans-Pittsburgh game and watch A.J. Brown and the Titans offense make a comeback in the second half after being down by 27-7 in the first half. First play we're looking at here, John New Smith lines up out to the defensive left. You see him move back in. They've got a tight bunch to the defensive left side, play action, and then a bang eight. This is a bang eight throw, an immediate throw to, to A.J. Brown. Really, really nice timing throw. Big time catch by A.J. Brown, knowing that this is a collision area. Watch the protection that works in the, with the offensive line to the right side. Very nice protection, bang eight, beautiful throw over the top of the linebacker on the inside. Splits the defensive backs on the backside, and then the tremendous speed with a man his size, A.J. Brown, touchdown. Uh, second and six, and the ball's on the 44-yard line, 12-23 in the fourth quarter. Now the score is 27-17. to We're looking at very, very tight in here. Play action week. This is a play action to the weak side now. Watch, this is a deep dig. This is a deep dig back to the backside X receiver where A.J. Brown is. Watch the play action. Really nice protection again. Immediate throw. The ball is placed perfectly. A.J. bounces the ball a little bit at the first to himself, but is able to hang on. And then with his strong hands and his strength on the inside, he's able to complete this catch. Huge first down for the Titans. Second one, ball's on the 29, 216 in the fourth quarter. Now the score is 27-24. Now we look at everybody is spread out wide here. The back is on Tannehill's left hip. Now watch the throw. This is a, a simple stop route over here to A.J. Brown that is the furthest receiver to Tannehill's left. It's an immediate throw. The corner is playing very, very far off coverage. Watch A.J. Brown not only make the immediate catch, but immediately turn and get up the field to maximize the yardage on a very simple stop route and take advantage of his speed and his size. Last play we're going to look at is third and 12. Ball's on the 46, 105 in the fourth quarter. Yo-yo motion, which is a back and forth motion by the tight end. Now we get a five-man pressure coming in here. Look at the precise route running and then look at the precise timing from Tannehill to A.J. Brown over here to his right side. You get the five-man pressure. The front and the back have to do a nice job of chipping to help. Excellent, excellent timing on the throw, but the route is run so precisely, and then the sure hands of A.J. Brown ensure another huge first down in the fourth quarter. A.J. Brown, the Titans offense, Ryan Tannehill were a big part of second-half comeback of the Tennessee Titans in this ballgame to draw the score closer. Looking forward to seeing what A.J. Brown is able to do against the Cincinnati Bengals. All right, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Mike Keith is back, and John Robinson will be here to give us a scouting report presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. Stick around. Got a question for Titans head coach Mike Vrabel? You can ask on Twitter by sending it to at Titans Radio. We pass along all of your questions to the big man each Monday night at 6 Central on the Mike Vrabel Show. 
So send in those questions to the coach at Titans Radio on Twitter. If you're out there saying that your one vote doesn't matter, you know, imagine that there's a thousands of people saying that and, you know, those numbers add up. So every vote matters. You know, growing up as a young man, you know, I never thought that my vote mattered, but it really does. And never once you had that same mindset. I think voting is a way for you to um, express yourself, express your opinion and try to make change. There's a lot of people who voice their opinions, but at the same time, you need to do more than just voicing your opinion on social media and stuff. You need to actually go out and participate and vote the way your voice is really heard. Your vote matters. Your vote matters. Every vote matters. Every vote matters. We welcome you back to Titans All Access, the Farm Bureau Insurance Scouting Report with Titans General Manager John Robinson. And, you know, Amy, one of the things we love to do before the draft is we like to pick John Robinson's brain because he tells us absolutely nothing. Right. It's very fun to get But we still, you know, we get blown away by, get blown off by the general manager. But... We didn't get a chance to talk to you before the 2020 draft for obvious reasons. And I know you weren't going to pick Joe Burrow because he was going to go very high and you were picking late in the first round. But I I would have been interested to hear your overall evaluation of him as a prospect coming into the league. And this week, as you get ready to play Joe Burrow in the Bengals, what did you think about him entering the draft? And and are you surprised he's done as well as he has this quickly? Uh, definitely not surprised. Um, you know, he was an outstanding prospect coming out of LSU. Really good size, really good arm, very accurate passer. Could tell that he had command of that offense down there, ha- had toughness to him to, to pull the ball down and, and, and take off running and scramble for yards whenever, whenever he needed to. You know, was just a really complete player. And, you know, his transition into the NFL has been what seems to be a pretty seamless one for him skill-wise. Bengals wideout T. Higgins is from Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Why has he started to emerge in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's got excellent size. Um, he, he really has uh, outstanding ball skills to, to track the ball, huge catch radius to, to go up and, and pluck it or out jump DBs. Or if the, you know, if the ball's a little off target, he can, he can still make the grab. You know, he, he's developing a rapport with Burrow there, uh, and those two guys are off to a fast start. The problem for Bengals opponents, though, is T. Higgins isn't the only receiver they have, not the only target for Burrow. No, they got plenty of weapons. You know, A.J. Green, still there. Uh, he's still a premium player, perennial Pro Bowl player. Tyler Boyd in the slot, he plays outside as well. He's an excellent route runner. He's really good with the ball in his hands after the catch. Thomas, the fourth receiver, he's a heck of a football player too. He's got really good size. He's got really good speed. Sample, the tight end, is growing to be a favorite target of, of Burroughs in that short to intermediate game. He's got good size. He's got good route running skills. You know, and then in the backfield, they got Gio Bernard, who's a really, really quick, fast player. Uh, they like to get the ball in his hands, and if Mixon's healthy and, and plays, he's a premium back for him. Now, Cincinnati may only have one win, but as you watch them, they really seem to be gaining confidence and just having fun playing football. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, you can see it on the sideline. There was a play on uh, on sun- last Sunday versus Cleveland where Phillips may have had an interception down the sideline, and the entire sideline erupted. They were all up. And, you know, these young stars have really rejuvenated this franchise. They're all playing hard. You know, they play for 60 minutes, and, and they're working to finish plays. And you can tell that this, you know, don't let the root record fool you. They may only have one win, but it's a good football team. John, what are the challenges for Ryan Tannehill and the Titans offense as they go against the Bengals defense on Sunday? Yeah, I mean, I think defensively, they've got they've done a really good job of, of mixing uh, veteran uh, players with with some youth. You know, it starts up front. You know, they got Geno Atkins, uh, Mike Daniels, Carlos Dunlap. You know, all those are veteran guys. Uh, Lawson. He's a problem off the edge as an edge rusher. It's the same at linebacker. You know, you got two veteran guys in Pratt and Bynes, you know, mixed with Davis Gaither and Wilson, two rookies who are really fast athletic players. And in the secondary, the safeties, Bates and and Bell, they really complement each other well. They're always around the football, you know, when the play's over. And they've got Jackson at corner, who's a long athletic guy, first former first rounder. It's a gap and go. It's a it's an attacking defense. So we'll have to be, you know, on point this Sunday versus those guys. John, thanks so much for the scouting report. Appreciate it. Good seeing you guys. John Robinson presented by Farm Bureau Insurance. When we come back, it's part two of my talk with Ryan Tannehill because I got to work on time. Titans All Access continues next. <laughs> Want to get a question in for the OTP crew? 
send us your OTPQ. Just go to TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ and ask your question. When Mike, Amy, Coach Mack, and Jim convene for the OTP, they'll give you an answer. That address again to submit your questions is TennesseeTitans.com slash OTPQ. Welcome back to Titans All Access. Mike Keith, we're going to get part two of your conversation with Ryan Tannehill. Give us a little tease. All right, so in this segment of the program, we talked to Ryan Tannehill about his relationship with the player that Dave McGinnis broke down earlier in the show, A.J. Brown. You have bonds with so many of your teammates and so many of your teammates on offense and so many of your receivers, but A.J. Brown talks about your bond constantly, that the two of you have something special. What is it about number 11 and number 17 that goes so well together on the field and even off the field? We have a lot of fun together. You know, I think uh, we both love the game. We love competing, love making plays, and we get along great. You know, I think not only AJ, but, but almost everybody on, on the, the whole offense. Man, I, I have a, such a, a good time building those relationships, getting to know guys, you know, away from football a little bit, what makes them go, what, what they like. And then, um, you know, when you're able to, uh, to spend that time away from the field, I think it makes everything on the field that much better. So much attention to offensive coordinator Arthur Smith and your relationship with him. Why is it so great to be Arthur Smith's quarterback in this offense? It's a lot of fun. I have so much respect for Arthur. I love working with him. Uh, he's been great from, from day one when I got here. Obviously, it was a different role, but just his approach to game planning, his approach to setting the tone for the offense and what we expect, holding everyone accountable, laying it out there on, on what we expect uh, is clear. And I love that communication. I love being able to, to work with him, game planning and making adjustments, whether during the week or even on, on game day, making slight adjustments that have paid off for us during the game. So I think there's really um, just a, a great banter back and forth, a, a great communication line that we have, and obviously it's paying off on Sunday. Last question. When you look across the field and you see a young guy like a Joe Burrow, and you think back to your days of being that early first round pick bonus baby, what do you know now that you wish you had known when you were back in that place eight years ago? So much. Um, you know, you learn so much o over the course of, of life, the course of your career, whether it's dealing with, with things on the field, dealing with things off the field, just football in general. I've learned so much football, you know, from the time I, I got to the league until now. Just the confidence that I'm seeing clearly what, what I think I'm seeing. But at the end of the day, you know, some of those things you just have to kind of go through in order to, uh, to pick them up. Some guys pick them up faster than others, but you know, for me, it's been a steady progression and just hope to, to stay on that path. So uh, for him, you know, just stay true to who you are, believe in yourself, keep working hard, and the rest will take care of itself. Good luck this weekend and the rest of the season, and thank you so much for the time. All right, thank you. Thanks for having me. It was awesome, the quarterback taking time to talk with us on Titans All Access the week of the Cincinnati game. To be clear, he didn't talk to us, he talked to you. Well, us is Titans All Access. It's our program. I'm salty. When we come back, my keys to beating the Cincinnati Bengals. That's next on Titans All Access. It's all about Mike today. No, it's not. Big Mike show. Sensitive. <laughs> Every vote counts. I know a lot of times for me, I, I think my vote's not going to count. But if the person next to me says the same thing, the next person to him says the same thing, all of a sudden nobody's voting. I didn't really feel the importance as a younger adult, but now I really see the importance, especially in this election, because every single vote counts. I mean, you never know if your vote could be the swing vote that can decide you know, who could be the president. It's your right as an American to, to make sure that your voice is heard and you have a say that one not only goes on the presidential elections, but you know everything between that and city council. Every vote counts. 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 Tighten up. Next week on Titans All Access, we prepare for the monsters of the Midway, the Chicago Bears, to make their first trip to Nissan Stadium in nearly a decade. And Derrick Henry takes center stage. The big runs, the big catches, the big stiff arms, and Old Spice. Yes, we've got all of that and more next week on Titans All Access. Mike Keith, the Titans are taking on the Bengals. Everybody knows this. What we don't know are your keys to victory. Give them to us, Mike. Key number one, pressure, as the great Billy Joel sang back in the 1980s. Pressure. 
The Titans have got to get pressure on Joe Burrow. There's always a game every year, it seems, that the Titans get the pass rush started, and then it sort of mushrooms from there into sacks and more sacks. This would be the week to have this happen. Burrow has had trouble being sacked this year 28 times. Titans need to add to that total, get their pressure amped up, get more quarterback sacks in the last 10 games of the year. All right, give me your second key. Hit them. Pretty simple. They throw the ball sideways. They, they do a lot of things. They use a lot of different receivers. They throw to Gio Bernard. You, you've got to get them, and, and wherever you're going to make a tackle, you got to get them on the ground. Not an easy thing to do with great athletes like the Bengals have. All right, give us the last key. My last key is get the tight ends involved. Titans tight ends, only three catches for 16 yards in last week's game against the Steelers. Some of that was because they were staying in to block, but when the Titans are good offensively, the tight ends are very involved. You've got Johnu Smith, you've got Anthony Ferkser, you've got Michael Pruitt, you've got Jeff Swain. That's when they're at their best. Want to see the tight ends be more involved in the offense this week. How are those for three keys? Those Pressure, hit them, tight end production. I like them. Those are solid. You ready to go to Cincinnati? I'm ready. Ready for Skyline Chili? Probably not. All right. <laughs> I am. Get it, Mike. We're excited. Titans taking on the Cincinnati Bengals this Sunday. Kickoff is 12.02 Central Time. Amy Wells, Mike Keith, the whole gang on Titans Radio joining you with Titans Countdown at 11. We hope you'll join us. So for Amy, I'm Mike. Thanks for being with us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>